Neo has so much going on. It's impossible to keep up, but sometimes the comment section actually prompts me to pull up some things and share some links. So this is one of the things that I wanted to share to start this video. And I'll just cover a few things that are kind of on the tip of my mind <laughs> from either responding to comments or just digging a little bit. So this is the first one back on March 17th, 2025, CATL and Neo. Uh, announcing their strategic agreement. And this is the part that I've highlighted. CATL will support NEO in developing the battery swapping network, while its Choco swap technical standards and network will be introduced to the subsequent newly developed models of Firefly, NEO's new brand. Then they want to tell a little bit more, but I want to keep it moving because this is then from early May, and this is from Will with China Driven. Shout out, Will. Thanks for this share and a lot of the shares that you uh, actually offer on the old Twixter platform. This is where he saw them installing one of the future Firefly. And then, of course, for maybe what the other uh, companies mainstream are going to be using for their swapping stations, of course, the Neo and Onvo right there. So um, this is, again, the progression and the build out uh, on kind of that note is Firefly and when will we see swappable uh, you know, battery as a service and swappable models? And as Will once again shares here, um, he's thinking maybe August 1st is when the Generation 5 swap stations will come out. Maybe those will be compatible uh, for Firefly, or maybe I think there was a teaser that I shared a couple months ago in a video from, I think it was Chin Li Hong, who, who kind of left out there that maybe there's a teaser, maybe some of the um, existing stations can do more than what folks are even aware of. I have no idea if that's the case. Uh, but if it ends up being that, let's say they can use some of the existing power swap stations in Europe, then that would certainly help with the expansion of Firefly if they wanted to offer battery as a service in Europe. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud and sharing some of my random thoughts here. This is also kind of in my mind. And, you know, in some of these articles, they don't actually specifically reference Neo. So like in this one, they don't. But what you'll note is a lot of the partners that NEO has actually agreed to do things with in the battery swapping technology. Like these are, I think, the first two that were announced way back in uh, November of 2023. It seems like so long ago, right? Uh, but um, so that's, again, just some of, the, some of the things I'm thinking about and wondering how it all comes together. And then, uh, of course, we've got the power swap, the energy storage, the V2G, and this is the highlight that I wanted to offer here. Neo is preparing to launch its first bi-directional power swap station in Europe. So I want to come back up and share the date here. This is from September of 2024. There's actually a February one where they announced one of their uh, partners in China for doing virtual power plants. So that's kind of a nod to the recent video that I did. Uh, and then finally, kind of random, I'm all over the place, but I just wanted to get a few of these points out. This is the other thing, you know, with the Envo L90 or the Ladao L90 coming up, one of the things that William Lee offered in this Q&A is that the pure electric vehicle market is growing, and that's for mid to large size SUVs, grew by 63%, but the extended range, so this EREVs, the Liato and some of those folks were selling so many of, they only grew that market by 1% year on year. So we could see a turning point, a pivotal point. If so, I think Neo is the best positioned. And then interestingly enough, maybe the other brands that will be coming into the market with pure battery swappable BEVs. What do you think? Drop it in the comments. I want to hear from you as always. Let me get this thing up and out. And by the way, I'll, I'll offer this. I'm not sure. Uh, I turned the settings. I changed them because I realized almost 40 different countries are watching my videos in the last month or so, which is phenomenal. I love the Neo global community in that aspect, but the YouTube settings have changed. And in the last couple of months, they, if I leave it so that more translatable, um, options are out there and I don't even know what all languages that entails, what it doesn't even tell me what, what all, um, countries are able to get a translation, but uh, sometimes it does not allow me to do any editing, meaning I can't even you know cut off the beginning or end of a video. So it, it does make it a little more challenging. It's one of the reasons I've gone to even shorter videos when I can, and I'll edit them as I'm able, but I just don't know when YouTube is going to let me. I do want to try and keep the settings such that as many people globally can continue to watch the videos, will actually you know stop through the channel and watch the videos and hopefully uh, have them, you know, able to be translated into their native languages. So in any event, Weili, have a great day. I'll see y'all again very soon.